my pleasure to introduce our first session, our keynote. Dr. Penny Pullen is a expert on virtual and hybrid working and author of Virtual Leadership, as well as founder of Making Projects Work. She is opening with her session on virtual leadership, creating new habits for leading in a virtual environment. Hello, everybody. The world discovered virtual in a big way in spring of 2020. But for me, I was forced to go virtual 19 years ago. And I'll be tapping into my work ever since with hybrid and virtual teams for this session. But let me tell you about what happened all those years ago. I was about to run my first ever program involving people from around the world, and we were due to fly into New York for a two-week program kickoff. Wow, my bags were packed. Everything was ready. My tickets were in my hand. No online boarding passes in those days. But there was just one problem. The date on my ticket was the 13th of September, 2001. And of course, just before then, the tragedy of 9-11 happened and we were grounded. There was no flying. So I had to do that program. I had to kick it off and then run it for several months virtually. And I've worked virtually ever since. So, yeah, that was what kicked me off working virtually. If you're wondering how I managed to scribble on my slides, Try going to the bottom left corner and you'll see a pen option. It's very useful. So yeah, the date on my tickets, the 13th of September, 2001. Ever since then, I've focused on success in tricky projects. And of course, virtual is a key issue that makes projects tricky, as I think most of us have found out in the last year or so. In 2016, I pulled together all the the learning I had around virtual into a book, and I have one coming out later on making workshops work, creative collaboration for our time. But let's dive into what we're doing today. One of the things that I find absolutely incredibly important is clarity. And that's one of five habits I'll be sharing with you today. And to be really clear, if you ever have a virtual session, it's important to answer six questions, these ones that are underlined in red. And I thought it would be good to model that for you and to run through it for the session. So what are we here to do? We are here to look at virtual leadership, creating new habits for leading in a virtual environment. So that's the first thing. What are we here to do? What's our purpose? The next session, the next topic, question to answer is, today we will. So we've already done an intro. We're then looking at virtual leadership and the first habit, which is clarity. Um, yep. And we're going to have a second habit coming up around virtual. We're then going to look at creative collaboration, which with a couple of habits there and a habit around engaging people remotely. So that goes into the objectives for your session. Our time plan, well, things have gone a little bit later. So I think we started about six minutes past the hour. So we'll carry on until about 26. So we will have a few bits of questions and answers, probably from about 24. Who's doing what? Well, I'm presenting. I'm delighted I have Catherine on the line who will be sending me messages about timing. So it's to make sure that I finish bang on time. And you're invited to be participants and not just, you know, looking on from far away. And how we're going to do that is the answer to this fifth question. The fifth question is how are we going to work together? And I'm going to say comments and questions, feed those in and um, Catherine will feed them on to me. And I will use those to change the direction of this very short keynote session. So please do send those in and they'll come through to me. And then at the end, um, we'll have time probably for a question or two if they haven't been all been covered. What will happen next? Be really clear about what happens next after any session that you run. So in this session, if you want to get in touch with me, I'm very happy to share slides 
Um, and and also further links to further reading. I can only touch on the, you know, the, the skim the surface of this one. So do get in touch, LinkedIn, um, or you can find me on the on the net as long as you um, put my surname as A N. So there we are. That's the first habit: real clarity. Let's go on. Something to clarify about virtual leadership. When I talk about virtual, I mean if at least one person is remote. So that means that this other thing that we've been talking about, the situation that many people are going back to, where you have a hybrid team with some people in the office and some people remote, or there are all sorts of different ways of doing hybrid you might have people in rooms around the around the world connected and a few individuals remote but that hybrid situation you also need virtual leadership just as much the second habit considers this hybrid your habit too is you need a level playing field like this picture here what does that mean well imagine that you have a whole load of people in a room together and you have individuals dialing in remotely. It's gonna not be a level playing field at all. It'll look like this. You know, the people in the room have massive advantage because there they are. If they try and score a goal, it's easy. They can look around, they can pick up on the nuances and dynamics of conversation. And they can, they can you know, glance at each other. They can pick up body language instantly far more than people who are remote can. So the second habit is to level that playing field, bring it down. How can you do it? A few tips. A client of mine has cartoon life-size cutouts that they put in chairs in the room so that everybody remembers those people who are remote. Another way of doing it, and I know some of the big consultancies are doing this, is to run all your sessions with everybody joining remotely, even if they're in a room together. So habit two, level your playing field. Do send in comments and um, I'll be happy to reflect those as we go through. The third thing to think about, the third habit is to understand yourself and others. And there's some different aspects to think about here. The sort of directive, a directive mindset that many people have for leadership is great in crises, but don't use it for virtual. Instead, you want a much more facilitated um, mindset. You don't have a group of people with you. You have a network of people spread out. Really think about how can you facilitate that network to deliver. Think about aspects of yourself and of the others in your team. The sort of things to think about, what about biases? We're going to be hearing a lot about diversity and inclusion, but what are your biases? Um, how can you understand that more and overcome those? What about your personality? What about the personalities of the people in your team? What's going to suit them best? What are your own preferences for communication and your team? And how can you come up with a a norm for communication that will suit them all. What are your strengths and your weaknesses and what are theirs and how can you match those together to come up with the best, the best team that you can? Okay, the skills. Think about the skills of yourself and others. Lots of skills. Things like listening, organisation, collaboration, the technology and engaging people remotely. So many skills to think about. Make sure that you understand what your skills are and the skills of the others. This one, I think, will come up quite a bit later on. What's the identity of yourself and others? And there are different aspects of this. There are tangible aspects of identity. Um, you know, things like my age, my gender, um, and so on. But a lot of those are less visible virtually. So for example, you couldn't tell if I use a wheelchair or not right now. It so happens that I don't. But actually, virtual can pulls away a little bit from these tangible aspects. 
and you can use some of the intangible aspects to connect with people. Perhaps everyone in your team is into lifelong learning. Great. Use that to create common ground. Think about how can you connect across distance and build that. So understanding yourself and others is really, really important. Another key habit that's really helpful and that helps with collaboration is to think about how you use technology. Lots of people are using things at the same time and different place. Down here, things like Teams, um, certainly the live meetings, um, Zoom, live Zoom and so on. There are lots and lots of technologies that support doing this real time. But if you are watching this on a recording, then you are doing something which is asynchronous. A lot of us, a lot of people have been sitting in front of video calls, you know, from early in the morning till late at night. So don't just do that. Shift. Think about working asynchronously. How can you do things so that people can work at a time to suit them? And then you'll find that you're actually supporting your diversity and inclusion because people can work around the things that they need to do at home. Perhaps if they get tired, they can have a rest and then they can carry on working. They can work when's best for them, whatever any limits are or any particular challenges that they have. And also it stops you getting zoomed out. So think carefully about that, how you can work best with a combination of live and then also doing things asynchronously. And of course, things like Teams will have places you can collaborate asynchronously as well as live, as live meetings. So habit five, think about go asynchronously, habit four. Habit five is engaging people, really important. There are about 10 things about engaging people virtually in my book, but I'm going to give you just the top three. These are use a narrative form. If you tell stories, people re will remember those almost automatically, which is really quite exciting with no effort. So I have a question for you. What was the date that I was due to fly from England to New York to run that kickoff meeting? Just think about it. When I ask people to do this and to share it, I find that 90% of them get it absolutely right. It was the 13th of September. 2001. Now you'll find that people remember things if they're in stories. So think about using stories. We are tuned into stories. We hook in automatically to the beginning, the middle and the end and we stay listening to the end. So that's quite powerful. What about using faces? It's good to have videos to have that extra element where you can bring in facial expressions and body language a little bit by video. But perhaps you can bring in faces other ways. You could have a map of the world with people superimposed on it with their headshots. Of course, you need their permission and so on. But that can help being a reminder of who's in your team. So even the quiet people, you can see, see them visibly and you can have a reminder perhaps when you're working asynchronously as well. And the other thing is to use visuals. I don't know what you think about me writing on the screen, but it seems to make a difference. And you can even add in your own drawings. Now, remember that it's not about being perfect. It's about being human. That will draw people in and engage them. So let's have a go at actually drawing a person. You know, the squiggle body, couple of legs, couple of arms, and there you are. There's something that looks vaguely like a person, much more so than the stick people, than people often use. But even a stick person is better than nothing. Drawing's great. The lovely thing about these squiggle people is that they're incredibly versatile. Look, here's one actually doing a handstand, which is more than I could do. And yeah, if you want to, why not have a go at drawing a squiggle person riding a bicycle? That's how I do it. 
You don't have to draw everything, just the essence. And you'll find that by adding in human, but not perfect drawings, you will have people watching to see what you're doing. So the fifth habit there was all about engaging people with vision and stories and faces. So let's just sum up um, five habits. The first one, you need to be extra clear, lots of clarity, visual sessions. Second one, I'm not going to write out, but you'll remember, level the playing field. Make sure that those remote people have the same opportunities to, to engage and to be part of your session. The third point, understand yourself and others. Third habit, work on that, all those different aspects of understanding. Fourth habit, think about asynchronous, not just always doing everything at the same time. Work together, but at times to suit everybody so that you're not zoomed out at the end. And the final thing is work on engaging people. It's really important. So I'm going to find out what questions there are. None have, none have come through on the chat. So I'm going to say to Catherine, can you say if any particular questions have come through or ask anything you'd like to, like to ask? Okay, one thing that's come through, what's the most important thing you have to remember kicking off virtual meetings? I think be really, really careful that you have a clear purpose. That first question, we are here to make sure that's answered clearly. And those other five questions, if you'd like the slides so you have a reminder, remember to connect with me. Right, I'm just going to... Um, Share my contact details if you like those. And I will be saying as well, just to sum up. I'm just going to summarize everything that I've said, which is that if you can put these five habits into practice, then effective virtual and hybrid leadership can be the lasting legacy of lockdown for you.